Um, if it does continue to damage my box though, Lear, fix your if you're watching this because that's kind of a big deal. This is a great lighting option. I've never seen it done before and I would highly recommend it. And if you think I'm too big to sleep in the box, uh, you know, box of a Tacoma, um, you know, Devin's 6'9 and you're not. Uh, and he fits. So. How's it going everybody? James from FTR Outdoors. We got Devin manning the camera again today. Uh, today's video we're going to be kind of continuing the Tacoma Overland segment and going over something that I've been kind of uh, doing research into more lately and kind of had a little conflict with and that's my canopy. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to go over my canopy, the type of canopy, the Tacoma camper build uh, in a sense only the canopy so as, as a sleeper build and then we're going to do my review kind of pros and cons and a one year review if it's worth it if I regret my decision if I can recommend the canopy to you guys and maybe you guys can take some insights and uh, make a kind of an educated decision if you're looking to buy one of these in the future. Uh, so we'll start off uh, with the type of canopy. So as you guys have seen in previous videos, uh, in the last two Tacoma videos, obviously I have a canopy on my truck. The reasoning for it is I wanted to have something to cover my gear and I also wanted to have something to sleep in so I didn't have to set up a tent on the ground. So to start, uh, to start off the canopy type, show you the little badging here is a Lear. <clears throat> um, so this is a Lear 100 XR uh, canopy. It's black because the factory color of my Tacoma is black. I did buy it new from factory and have it installed. Um, this canopy, in my opinion, looks the best in the Lear lineup. It's very comparable to the snug top canopies, the RE canopies. So if you guys are in the market specifically for, you know, a canopy, there's other stuff out there. I went with Lear. Um, the price is, it's pretty steep, but it's comparable to ARE. Um, and there's a lifetime structural warranty for the original owner, which I am. Um, the canopy, we'll go back to a cost on it. As stated in the other video, it was about 3,500 bucks Canadian. Um, that's what the options that I wanted. You can get uh, these with a whole bunch of different options, but it has the 50-50 slider with the mesh. Uh, it's got a carpet headliner. We'll get into my reasoning for that after. Uh, it's got the Thule tracker system on the top, which you guys have seen that uh, my Prince rack mounts onto. Um, it's got a dome light inside, which I never use to be honest. Um, and it's got a front slider with a fully removable front window. The canopy overall, I've had it for one year. It's been, it's done its job for the last year. I'll kind of go over some of my gripes in a little bit, but we'll, we'll start with what I enjoy and uh, why I actually bought the canopy. As you guys have seen in the past, um, I built this specifically to cover my gear first and foremost rather than having an open bed and to use uh, as a sleeper. Um, so there's a lot of overlanders out there who maybe don't want a rooftop tent, who like the convenience of just crawling in the back of a truck and having a snooze. It uh, works pretty good. It's very warm, it's comfortable. Um, if you don't want to spend that extra 5,000 bucks on a rooftop tent and a rack or something like that, you can just buy a canopy and you get kind of double utility out of it. Um, You've seen the drawer system that uh, we built in here. Um, this is pretty new. I've had it for only two months. Um, and I've only been sleeping on top of the drawer system now for a couple of months. We just actually got back from a trip recently. Um, and Devin and I actually managed to sleep in it together. If you've got a drawer system on it, headroom is limited, but it's not undoable. Uh, it's actually quite cozy. To put in perspective, I'm six foot tall, just about, or like give or take, and Devin's just about six foot nine inches tall. This is a six foot long bed. Uh, the mattress that I have on here is a twin. 
um, so you can actually fit a twin in here. If you've ever tried to sleep two grown men with a combined weight of about 500 pounds on a twin bed, it's doable. It's not the best thing in the world, but what I can say is it gets really warm back here with two guys in the winter. Uh, you guys will probably see that in the, in the videos up and coming as uh, Devin and I spend some pretty cold nights in the back here. Um, so I'll show you kind of what I got going on here. You guys have already seen the platform. I've got some insulating foam mattresses on here. Uh, we won't go too far in depth with that because that's not really the whole purpose of the video. Um, I've kind of mentioned the mattress that we have in the back here. I'll actually show you what we do. So all my gear stores here. I usually keep my bedroll rolled up in the front. Uh, it's always sitting up there when we're on trips. So when we pull over, I can just pull up my gear. And then this just unfolds like that. So you'll get a little view. You can just crawl in here. The two of us fit in here, no problem. Super cozy, super quick. Uh, for my buddies out there with rooftop tents, I will say 100% this is faster and more efficient than a rooftop tent. Um, while I'm in here, I'll show you what else we got going on. Uh, the carpet headliner, what kind of I said I'd come back to that. The reason for this is uh, it offers some insulation, but if anybody's ever camped before, which anybody watching this probably has, um, condensation is a big thing. Anytime you have warm bodies in a cold environment inside of something, uh, condensation is going to be an issue. With the carpet, it kind of absorbs the moisture. So a lot of people are like, oh, mold might be an issue. I haven't come into that issue yet as I've only had it for a year, but this is an outdoor carpet, so moisture shouldn't be a big issue. This thing also gets cooking hot during the day, so it dries up pretty fast. It's never soaking wet in here. Um, but it, if you can imagine, if this was bare fiberglass, two guys sleeping in here in minus 20, it gets pretty frozen. Uh, as soon as that starts to melt, it's gonna drip off into your bedroll, into your mattress, and that's kind of no fun. Um, but you can't avoid it. This is just kind of an extra layer of comfort for that. Um, on the side here, this is kind of something we did ourselves. I've never seen it done before. Some people will put LED light bars in the uh, in the canopy and run it off of a battery or wire it up to their own battery. What we did is we took some 550 paracord uh, and we have some 3M Velcro strips that we cut here. It's a carpet liner, so we stuck the Velcro to the carpet. And these are BioLite uh, little string pod lights, um, which we have linked together around the whole perimeter of the actual canopy. And it links up, I'll show you here, I'm just gonna crawl on out. It links up and we have it plugged into just a generic uh, phone charger battery bank. Um, so I did a test, I have a Jackery, actually we can show you I have the Jackery with me. Um, these lights kind of just add a nice warm, uh, easy on the eye light uh, when you're in the back of the canopy. So we were trying to figure out a lighting solution um, as we didn't get any factory LED lighting installed. Um, and this was kind of the best thing we found. Uh, the power draw on these things is next to nothing. So linked together, you're looking at about one watt of power draw. So I have a Jackery 240, which we can pull out and I'll show you to just kind of prove that point. To put in perspective, a 240 Jackery has 240 watt hours of power roughly. Uh, depending on the efficiency of the battery, might have a little less. Um, and if this is truly drawing one watt of power, these things will run for 240 hours. So in terms of an efficient lighting source that was inexpensive, this was kind of a sweet option. So we'll power this up here with the Jackery. You can see an immediate light and yeah on the screen you're, you're drawing one watt you're pulling zero watts at this point like it is such a small amount of power uh, that these things will go forever um, to put it in perspective I want to say these have about 80 watts worth of power in here uh, so you're getting 80 hours of lighting time super sweet so if you guys are sleeping in your trucks and you're thinking about uh, turning these into a camper uh, this is a great lighting option I've never seen it done before and I would highly recommend it in terms of pros for this canopy, we'll start off with the very basics. Um, so I've had this for one year and overall I do like it. Um, it's done 
pretty much anything that I really want it to do or need it to do. It keeps my gear relatively out of the elements. A uh, question that comes up often on Tacoma forums or pickup truck forums online, anybody watching Tacoma videos knows of the forums, um, is, is it waterproof? Um, no, <laughs> it's not waterproof. And I don't think it has anything to do with the actual design of the canopy because there's a pretty heavy duty gasket that goes all the way around it. It's more so the design of the Tacoma bed. Um, so there's pretty substantial gaps in between the tailgate and the sides of the bed as well as the front corners of the bed. So you'd really have to caulk and fill that in. Now that being said, I would say it's highly water resistant. Um, I've never had cooling water in here. I've ran it for a full winter now and you're looking at like minuscule amounts of water. Enough that I sleep in here and I don't really care about it. Even if it's pouring rain, I've never really had so much water. I have more condensation buildup of liquid in the back than I do uh, from the rain. But, you know, it's not totally sealed. Other things in terms of weather resistance is it fills with dust. Uh, the roads we go down um, tend to shoot the dust in and trap the dust. So I put a, an actual tailgate seal in actually yesterday. Um, so this season will be the first time uh, that we test this seal out and see if it works. I hope it seals the bulk of the, uh, of the dust out. I'm not expecting it to do a 100% uh, effective job because, well, there's still gaps in it. But if it takes out the majority of the dust, you know, that's a positive. Um, so yeah, right off the bat, it, it offers some sort of protection from the elements. The second positive is it offers coverage of your gear. So a huge thing for me is gear is expensive. Depending on the type of travel and trips that you're doing, I know a lot of guys uh, will bring a lot of gear. I know I keep a lot of expensive gear in my truck. Um, and I don't like the idea of leaving it in the bed of the truck. Let's say I have to go, you know, eat some food or we're parked at a hotel or, you know, I'm fishing on a river for an extended period of time. Without this canopy, all of my gear is just out in the open for anybody's, you know, curious eyes to see. So that's another huge positive for the canopy. Uh, the third positive for the specific canopy, this Lear specifically, is, um, the optional Thule tracks on the top, which you guys have heard about and seen. <clears throat> uh, the reason why I say that is the utility added. So if you guys are thinking about buying a canopy, I would say absolutely you 100% need tracks on the top of the roof. Um, if you don't have those, you're gonna have to drill your own holes, you're gonna have to mount your own tracks, and you're gonna have an issue with carrying gear. So having a rack up there, essentially, it doesn't double my space, but it increases the utility of this thing in such a way that I now have, you know, an awning on the top, jerry cans on the top, I keep water up there, I have a solar panel up there, I keep traction boards, I don't have to throw it in the box, which is absolutely fantastic. So that's another huge positive. The fourth positive, sorry, is the space. Uh, initially, I was looking at a diamond back cover. I know a lot of guys out there run them. I did quite a bit of research into them, and I like the idea of the diamond back, but at the end of the day, the Tacoma bed is super shallow. It's not a deep bed. And the diamond back, like any tunnel cover, is really limiting the amount of space that you can... If you aren't subscribed to FTR, please subscribe. Ah, yeah, please subscribe. So if you're not familiar with the diamond back, it's a, it's a classic tunnel cover, but more heavy duty. Um, they really like to advertise the fact that, you know, you can park stuff on top of them. They're virtually indestructible in their design. Um, but what I had kind of looked into is the size of the gear that I carry. Uh, the standard totes that I had at the time, um, depending on the space underneath that diamond back, I was worried they actually wouldn't fit in the box. So I would have actually had to have narrower totes. Um, my Yeti cooler, I was unsure if that was actually going to fit in the box. Um, I've seen guys mount their fridges on top of their diamond backs, but that kind of defeats the purpose of the diamond back and its design and how it hinges open with gaskets on both sides. I've also seen guys put diamond backs on top of their boxes to cover them and then put bed rails on there to mount a rooftop tent onto. Again, as soon as you put that rooftop tent on, you've got no access to the front of your, your box. So I kind of ruled that one out and the cost, you know, was up in that two, three thousand dollar range and I just didn't find the utility and it was what I was looking for. So in this uh, format, 
with the actual drawers under here, I can still get basically a full box worth of gear on top of the platform, which is absolutely fantastic. If you don't have the drawer system in here, you can actually load these things right to the roof and it's gonna keep gear in. Um, so you're, you're doubling your space actually that you can actually carry gear. So that's a, that's a huge positive with these campers. Another positive is it's, it's, it's a really, it's a stretch of a positive and that's gonna be the price. Um, in terms of other things on the market, uh, it's relatively inexpensive. Um, so it is, like I said, 3,500 bucks in this form, um, which seems like a crazy amount of money, but when you're talking a Diamondback running you about 3,000 bucks for shipping up to Canada, you're doubling your space for 500 extra bucks. Um, in terms of other canopies out there that are gonna be like aluminum, uh, stainless steel, metal, uh, these things are running you at two, three thousand dollars less at that point. So they, they get really expensive if you go on other terms. So this is kind of a good mid-range, uh, do-it-all kind of jack-of-all-trades. And then the other positive is just what I've done to it, I would say. But the biggest positive is how I've utilized the actual canopy and what we've done to it and the, the fun that it brings us. Um, you know, the amount of trips that we've gone on where we just don't want to set up the ground tent every night, where we're moving around every single day, where my buddies are struggling to open up their clamshell style or rooftop tents. Um, you know, we're packed up and ready to go in the morning or unpacked and ready to sleep at night uh, within, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. And, you know, I'm never in a rush because I know I don't have really anything to do. I just fold up my mattress, roll up my bedroll, and throw the cooler in the back and the chainsaw, and we're good to go. Uh, so it's, that's a huge positive. Now we're going to go into negatives, and there are some big negatives to these canopies that I, I've i struggled with because they drive me nuts. And, um, you know, I'm trying to, to, to come up with a... A solution to fix those negatives. So going on Tacoma forums, I have found a few other guys who've had this issue and I'm gonna say this is the number one negative of the Lear 100XR canopy, specifically in third generation Tacomas. Um, and it's how they're mounted. Um, so if you guys have a look here, these are mounted with a bolt and a little aluminum block here that goes into the Tacoma bed rail. So you have two on each side. Um, it actually sucks the fiberglass down and it's pulled it down pretty tight. I don't like to go much more tight than this and risk of cracking the uh, actual fiberglass. Um, but that design, <laughs> it's uh, questionable to say the least. I would confidently say if you're buying these canopies to stay on the highway and use as a utility canopy just for your tools, whatever. Um, that's more than adequate. Um, in terms of overlanding, off-road driving, uh, forestry road driving, what we do on a weekly basis, this canopy has been a nightmare, specifically because of that mounting system. Um, I find every single trip consistently, uh, I'm in here with a wrench or a socket, and I'm loosening off those uh, attachment points and I slide the canopy back in place. So this actually shifts forward and backwards, side to side. It's not an adequate job. That's, that's not an adequate way to mount these things in terms of, uh, you know, what we use them for. I'm sure driving straight on the road, like I've never really had an issue driving straight on the road. It's shifted enough that on this side specifically, I have taken off clear coat on my paint and in our last trip, uh, my vinyl wrap, I kind of cut uh, into the vinyl and now I've got to tear my vinyl on this side. Um, so the canopy's design is flawed in my mind, um, specifically in the way it's mounted and uh, I got some B-roll, specifically how the actual canopy wraps over the edge of the fender. So this thing wraps over the entire edge of your box uh, to give it that good aesthetic. And it does look really good, but when it slides around like that, eventually those overhanging edges are gonna hit your paint, they're gonna scratch your clear coat. If you got a vinyl wrap, they're gonna wreck your vinyl. Um, so I've tried to remedy that. Um, we're gonna see how this works. And I've actually put small spacers in between the canopy and the Tacoma bed. So these spacers, uh, I went to the hardware store and I went into the plumbing section and found some cone rubber style gaskets for like $2.50. I took some double-sided Gorilla Glue, the 30 pound, or Gorilla Tape, the 30 pounds uh, wall mounting stuff uh, suited for outdoor use. 
and I press them into the inside of the canopy. Um, and those spacers are hopefully going to act in a way that they're going to not allow the canopy to shift so far forward that it damages my paint further. Now, in saying that, when I say, okay, on the highway you shouldn't have an issue, I mounted these yesterday. Um, I snugged up my Lear, uh, I snuck the canopy with the bolts and the mounting hardware back to, you know, kind of where they should be and it's settled and I say settled because it tends to always just sit where it wants to sit no matter how you try to align it um, and it's settled to the point where this spacer on this side is no longer in contact with the bed and this spacer on this side is in contact with the bed to an extent where it's <laughs> pushed the vinyl down. So. This canopy wants to move, like it just wants to move. And I don't know if it's a factory defect. Uh, the dealership that I've gone to say they've never really had that issue. And I, you know, honestly, I can say that with the off-road usage, if you guys are hitting hard trails and forestry roads, maybe look a different route because this thing has been a nightmare for me. Um, where this also comes into uh, a negative and to an effect when this thing shifts, this side always shifts forward. And this is the side where the damage comes. And when it shifts forward, this latch here doesn't want to latch. So I'll be driving and this will either come unlatched or start to pull back on here and I won't be able to get it closed again. And that's kind of an issue because you don't want this flying open on the highway. Um, that would cost a lot of money to fix. And even this. So I'll kind of expand on that just a little bit more in terms of uh, like the negative aspect of it. That's kind of the one big negative. It's just kind of the overall design of it and how it's mounted. That's uh, I have a group that is one negative. Um, if I could go back one year, I would probably look more into the realm of a stainless steel, something like a, a smart canopy or an alu cab or some of the other options out there maybe a, a go fast uh, canopy um, because all of those things tend to be a little bit more designed specifically for overlanding and off-road use this is not marketed as an overlanding canopy it's just marketed as a like kind of a utility canopy so you know you're getting what you essentially bought. They, they've never once said that this is meant to withstand um, you know abuse and the torsion of the the rear end and bouncing around down forestry roads so you can't really fault them for it um, but yeah looking back I would probably change the route that I've gone. Now that being said I debated selling this thing in the aftermarket and buying a new canopy. Um, I weighed the pros and cons. The cons are so minimal I decided not to sell it. Uh, that's why I tried these spacers. And in the future, if these spacers don't work and they start to do damage to the bed of my truck, well, then I might reevaluate and sell the thing. But for now, I mean, I got what I paid for. It's done a ton for me, and I would absolutely recommend it if you're kind of doing some light off-roading and touring, um, which is mostly what we do. So I would say long-term review-wise or one-year review-wise, um, I would absolutely recommend this thing if you want to do something similar to what we do with it. Um, the actual camper and being in the back here uh, is super awesome. It's incredibly cozy, it's incredibly quick and efficient. Uh, I would argue that it's faster than most rooftop tents on the market. It's definitely faster than throwing a ground tent down and it's really nice being able to just wake up and go. We all know that condensation issue or that rain issue, if you wake up in the morning in a tent, it sucks packing away a wet tent especially when you have to reset it up the next night. It's not a good time. Um, so this kind of mitigates that and it works really well for what it does. In terms of the metal canopies out there, like the Smart Cap or, uh, well specifically the Smart Cap, I was kind of looking at that one. It doesn't have an optional carpet liner. It's stainless steel um, and it doesn't have a mesh in the windows as of yet. So if you're thinking about sleeping in the back of that, this was kind of ultimately the negative other than the price for me and why I didn't decide to sell this thing. I don't have a carpet liner in it, so that's a huge step down for me when sleeping in the back. Sleeping in a stainless steel cube, essentially, in the winter time, I would wager would be incredibly cold. 
Um, and then not having mesh windows uh, for the mosquitoes is another big thing. I tend to want to always have the windows open to get air circulating in and out of the thing because it, it, you, you want draft, you need ventilation. Um, and that's kind of a huge bummer. So that's ultimately why I stayed with this thing. And if you're thinking about you know, using this as a sleeper, maybe this is a good option for you. If you're thinking about going a rooftop tent route, um, you know, maybe buy a different canopy or maybe do bed rails with the tonneau cover, but you really got to think about the space and the utility that comes along with this. The utility is insane. Um, if you're buying a Tacoma specifically with a six foot bed, you're probably like me and you want six feet of bed space. And by adding this canopy on here, you doubled that space. And in terms of long off-roading trips, touring trips, you know, not just your weekends, this extra space really comes in handy because, um, you know, you're packing a big cooler, you're packing a chainsaw, lots of water, lots of gear, fuel, clothing, all that kind of stuff. Beers, lots of beers. You can put a keg in the back here, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we'll wrap this video up now. Um, that's kind of the, the camper setup and the build. Um, and then my one year review of the Lear 100 XR canopy. Um, like I said, there's more pros than there are cons, but the few cons that there are are kind of big deals. Um, so if you guys are looking at buying one of these canopies, kind of look, hopefully watch this video, weigh the pros and cons for yourself and decide, you know, what do I want to do with my truck and my camper over the you know duration of the next couple of years or months or whatever it is um, and before making a big purchase like one of these you know none of it's inexpensive unless you find a really cheap used option weigh the pros and cons and see what works for you because you don't want to regret your purchase at the end of the day and if it's not going to work for you you're stuck with a $3,500 uh, useless piece of <laughs> <laughs> It's not gonna work for you, don't buy it. Do the research. For me, we've been lucky, it works great. We're gonna stick with it until this thing breaks. Um, if it does continue to damage my box though, Lear, fix your if you're watching this because that's kind of a big deal, especially when dealers, you know, don't even know what to tell you. And in my mind, I'm sorry, but four bolts holding a 200 pound piece of fiberglass on the box of a truck going down a highway 120 does not seem safe in my mind but you know whatever uh, it is what it is so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video again brutally honest review for you guys I, I don't like to to fill you guys full of smoke and tell you that you know everything is perfect and amazing uh, we don't have any sponsors yet so we're not gonna be piping smoke up people's arses um, maybe one day we'll have sponsors toss us a comment if you have any questions in regards to the Lear um, I'm gonna post you know update videos as we go you might see this canopy gone in the next year you might see it for the next five years um, I don't know I haven't decided yet but for now you're gonna see this on every single trip this summer that we go on and most trips I'll be sleeping in it because that's why I built it that's why I bought it works great for that and if you think I'm too big to sleep in the box a uh, you know, box of a Tacoma um, you know Devin's 6'9 and you're not uh, and he fits so <laughs> um, Hit, uh, hit the like button, subscribe, uh, please subscribe. We've been uh, kind of coasting uphill and we're really enjoying the feedback that you guys are giving us. Uh, hit the bell and share this video with your friends. Um, until next time, we're gonna wrap this one up. Get outdoors.